Welcome to R Tips 17. And in this R Tip, we're covering keyboard shortcuts. And these are the ones that I use all the time. So if you want to get set up, we're going to be going through a code file. You need to sign up for the weekly R Tips. Uh, there's instructions in the video notes. Once you sign up for that, you'll be able to do a git pull. And when you pull down the latest GitHub repo, you're going to get this 017 keyboard shortcuts. We're going to click in there and we're going to go right here to the .r file. So you only get access to this if you sign up for our R Tips newsletter and then you get it weekly. Okay, um, we're in this keyboard shortcuts .r file and this is what we're going to be going down through. So we've got six keyboard shortcuts we're going to be covering. First, we're going to load in these two libraries. I'm going to hit Control and Enter, Control and Enter, and that's going to run the Tidyverse and TimeTK. So um, control and enter, that's a keyboard shortcut, and that sends code to the screen. So that's even a bonus keyboard shortcut. Okay, so these are the ones that I use all the time. The first keyboard shortcut is for commenting and uncommenting. So you do that with control, shift, and C. So I use this one all the time. I'm gonna do control, shift, C, or command, shift, C if you're on Mac, and you see how it comments everything out. And you can do this with multiple lines, I can go down here and select all of these lines and do Control Shift C, and it um, it runs it. Control Shift C un uncomments it. Cool. So you just learned your first R tip. Learn this one inside and out. Control Shift C. All right. The next one, the pipe. So this is one that my students love, and it's great for data wrangling. Um, it's Control plus Shift plus M, and that creates this thing called a pipe. So I'm going to do Control shift M here, and you can see it creates one, two, three, four, and so on. Um, these pipes are very useful because it pipes different things, um, typically data into a function that modifies that data or values into a function that modifies those values. So it's a really powerful concept. Um, here's just a, a case in action. M4 monthly is a data set. And that comes with the time TK package. It's time series. It's got four different groups in here. So um, they're each categorized. And then there's a date and a value for each of the groups. And, and they're all stacked on each on top of each other. So it's just one tibble that's 1574 by three. Uh, the first pipe here groups by ID. Control enter. And you can see now there's a groups. And this is what we call data wrangling. And then uh, the next one is a plotting function that comes from the time TK package, which is right here. And this is for visualizing the time series. So that creates this plot over here. It's an interactive plot where I can visualize all four of these different groups that are in here. Pretty cool. If you want to learn data wrangling and the pipe in depth, I teach that in my 101 course. It's using this package called dplyr and it's I teach it in weeks two and three of that course. If you want to learn time series with time TK and model time, uh, these are cutting edge time series packages. I teach that in my DS4B 203-R course. So definitely check those out if you're interested in learning more. Okay, uh, the next one, assignment. And I use this one all the time. This is used for functional programming. So when you're creating things like functions, you use this assignment operator, or if you assign it, um, a variable of value in R. So what it is, you do, you just do alt dash and it creates this, this little uh, dash, um, which is the less than sign and a dash. These are assignment operators. Okay. So how do you use assignment operators? Uh, if I do a is one, then in my environment, I'll have this a is one. If I do, if I want to create a function, I use an assignment operator. So this function create is called add to. And you can see there's an assignment operator right here. So when I create this function, it makes a function here. And then I do add three and four and it adds seven. So this is just a simple function. We'd create much more complex functions. If you want to learn functional programming, uh, I teach this along with iteration with the per library in DS4B 101-R. It's my introductory course uh, for R programming. I teach that in week five. Okay, on to the fourth one selecting multiple lines. This is one that is newer to me and I've been using it a ton. So you do control alt and up and down. And then what I can do is I can select multiple lines and I can change this to different install dot packages. And you can see here, it just quickly changes everything over. And then if I want to change that back, I can just do alt dash and just change this back to library all at the same time. Okay. 
pretty cool. Control all up and down, but it gets even better. So the fifth function is so powerful. Uh, find in files. So I use this a ton. And when I'm developing projects, I often find that I have to find different things in my files. And it's really tough to go through your file explorer and search all of these different folders here. What if there was a better way? Well, there is, and it's control shift and F. So do control shift F find in files. This is a superpower. So what if I want to find any areas where ggplot occurs in all of these different files over here? Okay. So I'm going to do a ggplot and just click the find and you can do, you can further hone in on just the source files or scripts or do some sort of custom filters. Um, and you can exclude certain files. I'm just going to search all of the files. So I'll click find. It opens up this new pane here and if check this out, this is really cool. So I have find in files and it shows me where each of the files has ggplot in it. So I can see I have it on line 45 in this file. So that's O2 scraping word docs. But what if I wanted to go to that, that specific location, just double click this and it opens up that specific location where ggplot exists in that file. That is so sweet and it's such a time saving and productivity enhancer. Okay, cool. So that is super powerful. Um, I use this in our package development. I also use it for searching complex projects. So it's very common. Um, okay. The last one, what I want to do is I want to show you how to get all of the keyboard shortcuts. So the last one is kind of a mega or a meta, uh, shortcut. It's how do you get more shortcuts? So you just do alt shift and K. So I'm going to do alt shift K. And now I have all of the shortcuts over here. And um, this is kind of just like a cheat sheet here. If you want more shortcuts, you can also click this button here and it, this will send you to a web page that looks something like this, where it has all the shortcuts here in a convenient file that you can print. If you like this video, don't forget to sign up for the Tuesday free R tips newsletter. You can just click this uh, link here and it'll send you here, put your email address in and every Tuesday you'll get these videos, you'll get the code and you'll get the tutorial right in your inbox.